I'm Molly Hagen, and you're listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is Molly Hagen, actress. I had played in countless films and television, such as I, Zombie, based off the comic book, and The Dentist, and The Lucky Ones, and Code of Silence, amongst others. Hello. Hello. So tell us about the I, Zombie. Um, it's a series for the CW, and uh, it's, uh, I think the premiere is in January, or it's definitely in 2015. It has not started airing, um, and they just started filming them. And um, it stars Rose McIver, who is uh, just such a pleasure. Um, she's she's funny, and she's gorgeous, and uh, the series is funny and interesting. And, and even if I wasn't in it, I'd be watching it, because it's uh, totally my cup of tea. It's very funny. What do you play as? I, uh, I play Rose's mom, and I'm um, sort of labeled as a, a tiger mother, which a tiger mother is a, a mother who's very hell-bent on her children succeeding, and so they raise them in a very specific fashion. Overbearing, I'm, all I care about is her success. When growing up, I'm sure I didn't give her a lot of uh, leeway in terms of play. The play was probably really structured. It's more about raising kids to succeed rather than raising kids to be lovable. <laughs> but between film and television, is it actually more challenging as far as role goes? Well, television works a lot faster than film. Like, if you're in a series, you have time to develop your character and, and do things because you're, you're, you, you're going to be going to work every day. But if you just show up for a day or a one week on a show, that's hard. You have to hit it, quit it, and forget it. There's no time for development of whatever you got going. Whereas if you're a regular on a series, you know, you can sort of, it sort of develops. And um, not that each episode you take your time, but you can sort of take your time. It, it, it morphs, it changes, it grows, it uh, becomes something more than what you started with, like on the first shoot. Uh, t- a film takes longer, generally, but actually the films that I do don't take longer. They they work really fast. So I don't think one's more difficult than the other. They're just different yeah and in terms of role like like you mentioned uh for it's always about the time because uh when it comes to film uh you do have time to build up what whatever your character is you have time to figure out what he or she is all about it is short you can just uh you take like like one day and then but then you have to kind of remember what exactly you're trying to portray as right uh, it does become very difficult I, I, I can see that happening and it does actually show on series it's just uh, that's the problem is it can be hard to even get into character after so many days of uh, short time well you can really see like a pilot versus something that's you know even 10 episodes in all of a sudden you know the writers know the actors more they start writing to, for the actors the actors understand what you know the, their character more and even though pilots can be really good, if they're allowed to really live, then you see real things come together and just the depth of the stuff that's going on. I mean, this, the Sopranos pilot wasn't what ended up... Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, over time, it just becomes so much more richer. Yeah, and it's just... Uh, when it comes to that, uh, it's like a big test run. Even if the show has been around, let's say, uh, a full season, it, it's still to consider it as a test run because uh, they're still trying to test out which characters is best for which character. They're trying to test out uh, which one's better for the audience in terms of story. Right. Be most interested in or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's the that's the biggest. It's all about popularity when it comes to the television wise. Uh, if you, if you can do it on TV series wise, if you can make that character just pop out of all the other characters, uh, it's a, it's always about what the audience is gonna vote upon. But when it comes to film, it's usually about critics. The most regular critics, critics is uh, the, you know the more professional ones. There are a lot of test screenings of film. A lot. Oh yeah. Test screenings of. Of TV shows too, so uh, they'll go in and they'll change things. To, to, no matter how small the budget is, that they'll go in and change things. Oh, definitely. It's a it's a constant thing. You I mean it's like with script wise, it's like you get a script from let's say five minutes, but then you'll get another script of the same script, but different within another ten minutes later. <laughs> but in comes of drama. Do you, which I mean the thing the, the the scripts that change the greatest are sitcoms. Those will change rapidly, but other things don't change quite as much as sitcoms do. Yeah. Because uh, once it once it hits, uh, usually stays that way for quite a while, unless you know until 
either the audience gets tired of seeing it or uh, the writers and or producers, you know, have a hand in and say, oh, well, it doesn't work very well. Let's just change it up. Well, I mean, you can usually, get, I mean, even though you might be rehearsing a sitcom, the next day you might get a completely different script. Oh, yeah. Before shoot. Definitely. So you, for a sitcom, you have like four days or two day, two to three days of rehearsal, and then you shoot. Some of it shoots in front of a live audience. Some of it's block and shoot. But the stuff can change on a dime. And even while you're shooting it, if it's a block and shoot or a block and tape or whatever you want to call it, it can change. At, you can do a take and then it can it can change before the next take. Oh, yeah. But compared to film and television, do you think the drama has more elevation in TV compared to, to the film? I will say this. I think TV's never been better. I mean, I think the, a lot of the dramas on TV right now are extraordinary. And because it's a long form as opposed to a shorter form like film, it can be much richer. I mean, Breaking Bad is was such a rich experience because it was a, a long form. You could not have done what you did with Break, in Breaking Bad in a film because of the time. Do you think there should be a balance when it comes to emotion in the character? A balance in the emotion of a character? Yeah. I think the first and foremost is, is a story, and then if something emotional happens because of the story. I mean, uh, the way I've been trained, it's not necessarily about the emotions, it's about the story. Yeah. And about serving circumstances. And if, if serving circumstances produce an emotion, then then it produces emotion. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. But I, I, I think it should story should always lead. Do you think sex appeal is a part of getting ready for the, the roles? I'm 53, no. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was young, I was a character actress, so that it doesn't really apply to me. I think some people inherently are sexy and are, are beautiful in, in a sort of a sexual way. I don't know if you can cultivate that. I think you either have it or you don't. I kind of feel that way about comedy, too. You either have it or you don't. It, I, I guess somewhat it can be cultivated, but... Um, Sex appeal is, I, I really think, something you're kind of, you grow into in your teens and you sort of develop. I think you either have it or you don't. I mean, so for me, you know, I don't think sex appeal is important because I'm not, I'm never going to be cast in those roles. Yeah, there are there are actors that specifically go for it. There's always different categories of actors. Like, they'll, uh, there's the creepy character, there's the standalone character, and then, of course, the sex appeal character. Like, more importantly, the image to the character. Like, the you know, ripped abs and uh, for females, beautiful body and hair and all that. But do you think it's kind of a little bit of a distraction in a way? A distraction? Yeah. No, I mean, when I'm watching, uh, this is such a complicated thing because I, it, I come... I, I'm a fan. I, I'm a, you know, my first thing is I, I'm a fan. So when I, I understand I want to watch something and I want to see beautiful people. I want to see, I want to see beautiful people. On the other hand, I really want to see regular looking people too. I want to see character faces and character stuff. But if, like, Kira Knightley, she's extraordinary looking. I like looking at her in a film because she's extraordinary looking to me. So I like watching her. Julie Louis Dreyfus, I think Julia is, beautiful. I want, I like watching her because she's beautiful. I mean, she's also really funny, but I mean, it doesn't hurt that these people are gorgeous. And so I don't necessarily think it's a distraction. I think it uh, can enhance. And at the same point, it would be nice to see normal looking people on TV and film. Yeah. It's like when you watch commercials, uh, infomercials, or whatever commercials you, that's on, it's you always see more of an attractive person on there because that's part of the whole uh, selling point when it comes to products. It's the same thing with film and television. Uh, you don't see someone that's fat half the time on a commercial. You don't see anyone that's like too skinny or uh, less attractive compared to this other attractive person. Yeah, I think commercials are about hiring people who look like the better side of normal. You know, I mean, they're, they're, unless it's a specific, you know, they have to be a knockout. But if it's, you know, a bank commercial or something like that, they're going to pick people who, in the Midwest, they'd be gorgeous, but in Hollywood, they're, you know, normal looking. Average. In Hollywood, they'd be average. Somewhere else, they'd be fantastic looking in real life. But in, in Hollywood, they would be average. The, the most average and normal looking we get, I think, is probably in commercials. Yeah, it's all about uh, product placement. Well, it's also about appealing to people. Like, uh, it's someone watching TV and going, oh, I recognize myself as, as that. And so I'm going to buy that product. It's all about how you sell it. Yep. What are your thoughts... Films and television are going to the traditional uh, icons of horror, icons of film, by uh, focusing on like like zombies, like this and uh, Dracula. Because you see more films of this than you do like you know serial killers, unless it's a you know criminal TV show. Well, I think um, you know if it's zombies, if it's uh, 
vampires, different things like that, I think that puts it in the realm of fantasy and uh, it can be a, a, a good scare um, because I don't think we actually believe it. But serial killers and things like that, they are out there. Um, that's really hard. for I can't watch that stuff. I can watch stuff that I know is fantastical, but I... Just by virtue of how many programs are on about that kind of stuff, I guess others do too. I, I, I don't know how much we like to, as a nation, really delve into real stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to watch a, a, a psychotic killer. I, I just don't. I, it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> I don't like watching sociopaths. I don't like... It's, uh, it's a great movie, won the Academy Award, but it, it was terrifying to me. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, that's what I'm that was just, It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. And I'm not watching the Cole Hannibal. Yeah, that would be the uh, like uh, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not watching that. I, it might be great, but I, that I, I can't. Well, go ahead and plug in about iZombie and your other current projects that you're doing. Uh, where, when can we expect this? Uh, also named. Uh, where is it going to be airing? Is it only going to be airing on this station or on this channel? You know, I have Directv. I thought I was going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think so. The CW, I think that's that, that's who's going to, you know, maybe DirecTV has local programming or something, and maybe it's actually on some sort of local programming in, in uh, California or Los Angeles. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just did an episode of Satisfaction, which is a USA show, which is very interesting. I think it's interesting. I'm going to shoot the Zac Efron film this Friday, so things are going okay. Awesome. Well, there you have it, everybody. Actress Molly Hagan.